Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over was common leak points in a house that could lead to a higher heat gain, all right, so a higher BTU gain of the house, which means that the air conditioning system would have to run longer or harder in order to try to keep up, if it can even keep up with it, all right, um, and likewise, it could be a heat loss, you know, in the middle of winter, and your heater would have to work harder, right, in order to keep heat in the house. All right, so uh, here we go. So regular supply register, right? Right here you have roofing nails holding it in, all right, on the sides, but you see that you have some leaks right here. So you have a leak point here, basically all four corners. All right, so if it was a wet crawl space, you know, you're gonna be having that humidity and the smell come up and through there. All right, um, and you're also just losing air as well. So for instance, this register's on here, the air is pushing up, okay, coming out of the supply register. It could find its way behind, behind the register and back down in the hole, all right, which means that your house is going into uh, negative pressure there and it has to make up that negative pressure somewhere by stealing air from outside. Um, but the air is going to go with the path of the least resistance. The, basically, all I can say right here is you want to go ahead and seal this up. So we're going to go ahead and seal this up right now. Going to use a dripless caulk gun, all right, one that has a rod on it. So you just take your caulk gun, take your GE silicone or whatever you're using. It should be some type of a probably silicone product. All right, and you're going to jam the rod in it multiple directions in order to break the tin foil right here. Now we're going to go ahead and seal that up. All right. Now you want to use rubber gloves in order to Press this in. Now, nitrile gloves are the best to use for all round circumstances, but uh, this is what I'm using right now, just for this this instance. If you're going to work with fuel oil or anything like that, you want to wear those nitrile gloves. That's the best way to seal up fluids from getting in your hands there. But yeah, you want to go ahead and rub it in. Make sure it gets into those crevices. All right. All right. That's that. And we're going to go ahead and put our register back on. So the other thing is you're stopping bugs from cutting, getting in the house and possibly even small mice, which is crazy. But, uh, yep, all that just right underneath your register. So that's one spot. Now, if you take a look at this window right here, it actually looks like it's closed, okay, and locked, all right? But if you take a closer look, all right, if you take a close look, you can tell that this was actually not closed properly. So you're going to go ahead and pick the window up, slide it back down, make sure it has a nice tight seal. I can't tell you how many times I've been out on service calls where a bunch of the windows are somehow unlocked or open or something like that and the homeowner's wondering why the house isn't getting cool. Um, so I check the refrigerant charge, make sure I have proper airflow. I notice everything's pretty good and then I start looking at the building structure and saying, hey, wait a second, you know, something, something's not right here. Um, you know, or sometimes I just take a peek at that first if it's really humid and I know the unit's been running for a long time and uh, it seems like I'm getting the correct 18 to 21 degree temp difference between the return and supply, then hey, there's something else wrong with the building show. But that's something you need to check. All right, another common leak point is actually where this trim meets the wall at. So if you can actually say I can put my fingernail right in this area. So if the installer did not put some type of sealant where the trim, the stain trim meets the wall at, you're going to have... Um, a possible air leak right here where it goes in here and goes in through your wall in your insulation all right um, 
but uh, that is actually more of a insulation barrier leak, okay? Um, but that's not that's not good, all right? If it was paintable trim, then you could just caulk that and then paint over that, all right? So you'd paint over it once maybe um, with your wall paint, all right, over to here, and then you would cut in with your white paint in order to make a flat edge again. This could be another problem right here where the trim meets the window frame. All right, so if this is a uh, paintable trim or a painted trim, then you're going to put paintable caulk in here and then paint over. Now, here you have your window. All right, your window sash rides right up along the window frame. All right, so some windows allow for adjustment, especially like replacement windows, can actually adjust this frame right here in towards the window. All right. But for, say, new construction windows that aren't replacement windows, then you actually have to, a lot of times, take the trim off and put shims back behind, behind this frame right here, and that will push the window frame in, okay, in order to meet the window. So if you see that you either see light here or that you notice that um, it's kind of sloppy, like the window, when you're holding the window, you can rock it when it's unlocked, that would mean that your frame right here is not tight up against your sash. You don't want to have it too, too tight because you want to allow for expansion and contraction during uh, winter and summer. But at the same time, you want it tighter so that um, you don't end up leaking air, you know, out of the house exfiltration or into the house infiltration. All right, here we have the bottom of a door and we're going to go in for a closer look. All right, here we have the bottom of a door and you notice that you don't see any light. You see no light coming through, all right? That's because this weather stripping wedge is in, okay? And the bottom is not deteriorating, all right? There's a couple things that you need to notice that you can do quickly to seal up a bottom or the side of a door. You need to have these weather stripping wedges, all right? If you do not have these wedges, it won't push the weather stripping out. This weather stripping right here on the bottom needs to be forced outwards on that needs to happen on the bottom and the top of the door, okay? If that is missing, you will see light. You will see at least a quarter to a half inch of light coming right through the corner every time. The other thing is you can actually adjust these screws and that will lift the bottom of the sill plate on most newer doors. So you can adjust the, bot you can adjust the bottom of the door on all newer doors to meet the bottom of the weather stripping. If the weather stripping is starting to bend and fold in, you can pick this up, all right, in order to adjust that one. All right, and up top you see the top wedge, all right, that's installed too. You'll see light if you don't have that, all right. The other thing is this weather stripping right here, you can replace this weather stripping. Uh, this this style at least you know you can pull that right out of the door frame and put new right in there all right so if you have an animal ripping it up or it's just bent and broke from over time most of the time you can you can just pull that right out and replace it all right just to, I'll show you see you can just pull it right out all right and then you just shove it right back in well I hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.